All right, let's take our Bibles this morning. Uh, we have two more lessons on fishing for men, and then we'll be done with this series. Um, the theme verse, of course, is on your on the handout there, Mark, Mark chapter 1, um, verses uh, 16 through 22. That's not all of it, of course, but that's um, the gist of it. I will make you to become fishers of men. And it's really, again, the courses, the, the lessons have really been about not only sharing our faith, but just uh, walking with the Lord. And um, the three years that Jesus spent with the apostles so that they could become fishers of men. And so, um, before I read the scripture, I'll have a word of prayer, but God has called all of us to be fishers of men and um, to lead people to Christ, to encourage people, to pray for people, um, to be involved in ministry. I really believe that's all part of being a uh, fishers of men. Uh, everything from our prayer times, uh, our small group that meets on Friday mornings at uh, 630 in the morning, praying for the ministry here, praying for certain needs. Uh, we've seen many prayers answered really out of that small group of men that meet. Um, I was so thrilled on Wednesday night. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember, but I think it's close to a year ago, I had mentioned that um, we, had visited a, uh, we had visited a home in town to get some kids to ride the bus. And um, I just remember the look on their face, like they really would like to come. And there were three brothers and one little girl. She's too young to come yet. But uh, one of the boys' names was Isaiah, and I really, had a burden for him. And so several weeks ago um, for our Wednesday night, we're actually, we're bringing more kids in on the bus on Wednesday night than we are on Sunday morning. And the Wednesday night Bible club has really been very fruitful. So, um, and that's a good thing. So it's, especially in the summer, it's often hard to get kids Sunday morning because like stopped at one of the girls who who comes and uh, her mom said, well, we're heading for the beach today. And uh, so uh, that's what happens in the summer. And, um, but, but her little girl comes pretty faithfully every, every Wednesday night. And uh, so we're thankful for that. By the way, uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. If you'd like to make a meal for Wednesday nights, we're starting to feed the kids. And um, you put your name on the list and then speak to Aaron uh, with regards to that. It's just for the kids. It's not for the adults that come. But um, I went around on Wednesday. I go out Wednesday about 5 o'clock and I visit all of the kids and then we go back at 6 o'clock and we pick all of these kids up. But I mentioned to all, how to visit all the parents to tell them we could pick them up a little bit earlier because we want to feed them on Wednesdays. And so they were thrilled, you know, that we would pick them up and bring them. And the kids, like we got done a little bit earlier this past Wednesday. It was right at 7.30, and we're trying to get the kids home by 8, but I remember the one little guy, Carter, it's 7.30, and, and I said, it's time to get on the bus. He said, wait a minute. He said, I thought we are supposed to be here till 8 o'clock. You know, he, was, he just wanted to stay and, and get as much out of it as he could. But um, anyhow, all of that is being a fisher of men, whether you're doing what I'm doing, going out on the bus and picking people up, or making a meal, or praying, or teaching the lessons, um, it's all part of it. So that's really what this has all been about. But today uh, in the lesson, we just kind of want to talk about, um, well, we had, last week we had three first-time adult visitors. Oh, I didn't tell you, so the little boy Isaiah, maybe I didn't even say this yet, I'm telling you this whole story. He came on Wednesday night for the first time. And it's really cool because in another neighborhood, we picked up all of his friends from school, some of his buddies. So they see little Isaiah get on the bus, and they all run, Isaiah, and they put their arms around him and hug him, because I'm sure they haven't probably seen each other since school got out. So they all know, and, and it's really been, um, by and large, a good group of kids, too. They really seem to listen. Another little girl, Karina, that we pick up, we gave her a Bible. She's here this morning, and she, gets, she lives with her grandparents, and every morning she's ready. She gets on that bus with her Bible, and Wednesday night she's with her Bible. And uh, 
So anyhow, that little boy Isaiah came last Wednesday night for the first time, and uh, that was really thrilling for me because I've been praying for him. And um, so I thank the Lord for that. But let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And, um, and, I, and then I was just mentioning before I talked about Isaiah, the three that came last week, we had three adult first-time visitors. And I praise the Lord for that. They heard the gospel. So people invited these folks to come. It's part of being a fisher of men. Um, and um, that's what it's really all about. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, these are pretty familiar verses. Paul says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. I'm going to read a little bit further. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and after that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. And after that, he was seen of James, then of the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Just stop right there. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you'd bless our Bible study this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts in a very real, powerful, and personal way. Guide us, direct us, uh, just teach us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. So, if you notice on our handout, some just basic thoughts to begin with. Salvation, of course, is of the Lord. We talked a little bit about this on our Wednesday night adult Bible study. Salvation is in the person of Jesus Christ. The gospel is, of course, the good news of Jesus Christ. And we're reminded that it's not a plan. People don't get saved by following a plan. And I'll actually, I'm preaching this morning because Ethan's away. I'll say about that in the message, but it's through Christ. He is the way of salvation. In John chapter 11, Jesus would say, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then Jesus poses the question, Believest thou this? And that's really a question every person must answer, isn't it? Do you believe that? Have you put your faith and trust in Christ? So this morning's lesson is really about you and I, however God leads, in sharing our faith with other people and taking that opportunity. So if you notice this on the handout as well, I mean, in the reason I picked 1 Corinthians chapter 15 uh, Paul here is speaking to his Jewish brethren. Brethren, he says, I want to declare unto you the good news of Jesus. I want you to hear this. And then you know, he lays it right out in verse 3, how I, I received Christ, how Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. We could have went to the book of Acts, and we could have, three times in the book of Acts, Paul gives his, um, Paul gives his a testimony. He shares how he came to know Christ as his Savior. So you notice these three points at the bottom here. My life before I received Christ as my personal Savior. We all have a life that we live, especially if we, if we became Christians as adults, or maybe in our teen years. There was, there was a life that we had uh, that, that we lived. Now, personally, if you're going to share that part of your testimony, I don't really necessarily think that you have to share every little detail of your life before you came to know Christ as your Savior. Because there may just certain, be certain things that, uh, that are kind of private things uh, that don't necessarily need to be talked about. But in a very real way, we all 
had a life before Christ. Some of you were very religious before you get, became a Christian. That's a, that's a testimony, part of your testimony that you can tell. You were, you, were in a, you were in really a religious system that does, in many ways, uh, adhere to a plan to be saved, not a person. Uh, some of you had no religious affiliation whatsoever. Uh, some, some of you were atheists or agnostics. And that's a story that can be told to people. Then there's the story of how you came to know the Lord as your Savior. And Paul numerous times tells that story. Uh, whether it's part of it when he was on the road to Damascus and the Lord appeared to him there. But in his testimony, he shares all of that. Dennis, we've got some folks coming in. If you could give them copies. Everybody, anybody else have a copy of today's lesson? Demetra, did you get one when you came in? Got one? Okay. So Paul tells that story. We all have a story to tell. And I think sometimes we wonder, well, how can I share my faith? Your faith is a story. And uh, you just need to think about it. And in simple terms, to discuss what that story was all about. And then part of it, our testimony, is not only how you came to know Christ, and people came to... Let me ask you this question. How many of you, how many of you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior in a church service? And if you could just raise your hand. In a church service. Only two of three of you. Three of you. All right, unless people don't want to raise their hand. <laughs> How many of you accepted, well, I don't know, maybe somebody would like to share, a, not necessarily the how, but uh, where you accepted the Lord as your Savior. You want to share that? Where was it when you accepted Christ as your Savior? Just where was it? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you because of the fan. In the, in the Navy. And you shared, actually, Jim shared a little bit of that testimony with us on Wednesday night. All right, somebody else. What, yes. So that was in a church. Okay. All right, somebody, what, you accepted the Lord, but not in church. Somebody else. Yes, Jenny, go ahead. Yeah, well, that was the church. I don't mean the building, I mean the group of people. Yes? A coffee table in your living room. A coffee table in your living room. Is it your folks that share the gospel with you? Yeah. There's probably many. Yes? A cheese. A cheese. Yep. Yeah, over Chinese, over egg rolls. <laughs> Amen. Somebody else, where was it that you asked Jesus to be your Savior? First of all, how many of you went to church first to hear the gospel? Some of you didn't go to church first. How many, got, how, many, how many of you were ever handed a gospel track? Wow. Bill doesn't know. He's trying to figure out what. All right. So, uh, so, so far, it's every, been everywhere from church to cheese, the Chinese restaurant, to your, your home. Um, Anything different than that, or, or if you want to share that, go ahead, Debbie. In somebody's living room, somebody else's home. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Where you accepted the Lord? All right. So different places, different people. So like somebody's living room, so someone was sharing the gospel with you in their living room. All right. Uh, in the restaurant. Travis and I were talking about spiritual things. In the Navy, was it the chaplain that you had sat under his preaching? Or was it another sailor? Was it uh, the cook? I mean, what was it? Just tell me, tell me! <laughs> All right, you're done. No, no, right. Who, who, who was it, Jim? Who was the person?
Okay, good. So that person. Anybody else want to share a person who talked to you about the Lord? All right. So anyhow, we have a testimony. We have a life before we, can't, we knew Christ as our Savior. We, we, we have a testimony how I came to know the Lord. We have a testimony of what Christ means to me that now I'm a Christian. That's all part of our testimony. Because, you know, there are sometimes when we're talking with people, they're struggling with things in life. And sometimes you might have struggled with something. And you could say, you know, I, de- I, I have dealt with that too. But, and that kind of leads into, I accepted Christ as my Savior. And this is how I'm, I'm dealing with this. So turn on the back to the back of your, of your handout. And uh, let's just talk about some of these things. Dr. Clarence Sexton wrote this. And it's really uh, a great statement because it's so true. Here's the thing that we always need to remember. The Holy Spirit is at work drawing the lost to Christ. So in other words, it could be at work, could be at the Little League game. You just name the place. You don't know. Let's say you're in a crowd of people this size. Only the Lord knows who, who, who's, who's drawing to himself in that crowd. But there, the Lord is working in people's lives. When the Lord was working in your life, nobody around you probably knew. I mean, some people may have been praying and hoping. But the, Lord, the Holy Spirit is at work drawing the lost to Christ. As the Lord orders our steps, he brings us into contact with those whom we are to witness. Our Lord is preparing the hearts of people to receive the gospel. It's already being, the Lord's doing the work already. Sometimes I think we think it's us that are making the initial contact. The Lord is doing the work. We're the instruments. We're the vessels that the Lord uses. And um, we're to be mindful of that. We should think of that. You never know. So a couple of things here as we just deal with people one-on-one. Um, when you're sharing your faith with someone, now this, might, this may seem to be an obvious one, be friendly and personable, but sometimes people sh- can share their faith, they can become, um, what's the word, uh, confrontational. Now, there's a certain element of confrontation, but you know what I mean by confrontational. I mean, obviously, the, the, uh, the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. And so sometimes, just even in a personable and friendly way when you're sharing your faith, it becomes confrontational. But you're not purposely trying to be confrontational. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, Although, I have to be honest with you, there's been a couple of times where I thought confrontation was not necessarily a bad thing. I confronted somebody once because they, they were preaching a false gospel. And, uh, but I tried to confront them in a personable and friendly way. But the Bible says in Proverbs 18.24, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that, cl- that sticketh closer than a brother. So when we're sharing our faith, let's do it in a friendly way. That, and people understand that, you know, we used to have a little saying that was on a lot of our uh, printed information that said, uh, because he, meaning Jesus, he cares, we care. And people will listen to you if they think that you care about them. And um, you know, I was talking about the bus ministry earlier, and so I'm always trying to be, you know, when we're picking up these kids, I'm meeting their parents and all along the way. And I'm always trying to, when we drop them off or we pick them up, often their parents are there. So I try to be as friendly as I can to them and so that uh, they feel comfortable with where they're ch- sending their children. But I'm hoping at some point to be able to share the gospel with them as well. In fact, today we were over in the neighborhood next door here and there was a man standing outside who I've known for years I have to say his first name is Carl, and so I said hi. We talked a little bit, and then I'm getting back, uh, getting ready to get back on the bus. I had a knock on somebody's door. It was a Gideon usually does that. He wasn't with me today. And I said, you know, you, I, I, we made a little small talk. I said, you can get on the bus and come to church with me today. 
And so he kind of smiled, and he said, no, not today. He said, but I ought to go. I ought to go. And I said, yeah, well, you're always welcome. Yeah, he lives there, so he sees the bus. You're always welcome. So you might, I don't know, I, I just have always th th thought that the Lord can use even a little thing like that. One day, this guy might be going through something, and he might say, hey, I want to get on the bus. Or he might just see me and say, can I have some time and talk with you about something? I've had that happen many times. And uh, sometimes your friends, they just want to talk to you about things. Um, being personable and friendly. Then the second one is one that sometimes it's, it can be harder th than, uh, than we make it, although sometimes I've missed some of these opportunities. I missed this opportunity the other day when I was at my doctor's, to be honest with you. Learn to look for spiritual opportunities. So it was last week we talked about the woman at the well, but look at John chapter 4 and verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So you remember what happened. Jesus must needs go through Samaria. He's at this well. The Jews and the Samaritans don't get along. The woman is shocked that Jesus is even talking to her. And uh, so this opportunity arises where Jesus presents himself to her. You and I need, just kind of need to look around for spiritual opportunities. I've, I've had my same doctor for over 30 years. I had to have a physical the other day, and I was the last patient. And um, it was a, uh, we were there quite a while, and everybody else actually had left the office because my appointment was at 5.30, and Everybody but the doctor. The nurse got done, and she left, and then the doctor was there, and we were talking. And afterwards, I thought to myself, man, you had a perfect opportunity to talk to him about his eternity, and you, and you left it on the table, and it bothered me. And uh, so... Um, he knows, obviously, that I'm a preacher. He mentions, he, he mentions things about church and, and many times. It's almost like the Lord is hitting me in the head with a, with a hammer saying, well, how much, how much more do you need before you can start to talk to your doctor about the Lord? And uh, so whether it's that or there's just other opportunities that are around where we can share the faith, our faith with someone. But we have to look for those opportunities. We have to ask the Lord to show us those opportunities, to be sensitive to those opportunities. Because, if, it, it, because they're all around us. Because remember, all around us, the Lord is touching people's lives. And you and I can be used to touch people's lives. The third one, never cause a scene. Ecclesiastes says, the words of a wise man are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. I remember Shelly and I were brand new Christians, and uh, we had a couple that was coming to church here, and they invited us to go out to dinner. It was a Chinese restaurant, actually. Now, both of us had professed Christ as our Savior, but we were all brand new at this. And remember, this, this isn't just about leading someone to Christ, it's Becoming a fisher of men is, is helping people grow in the faith as well. And so we were brand new. I mean, I had gone to church when I was a kid, and so I knew a lot about church and the, and the Bible, and it's all brand new to Shelley. And so we went out, and, uh, and I had no problem praying over dinner in public. But I didn't realize that when this fellow asked if we could pray that he was going to have the entire restaurant also hear him pray. And so it was very loud, and as we were kind of like a little embarrassed by it. Now, you might say, I know, I know many of you are much more spiritual than I. Well, why would you be embarrassed by that? Because we were. And we were brand new Christians at this. And um, I was thankfully wanted to pray, but... And maybe this is a very judgmental statement, but it's almost as if he wanted everyone else to, to look at us to see what we were doing. And um, 
I don't know if that was right or wrong, but I sure felt uncomfortable. Um, I thought he was causing a scene. And I think when we're witnessing to people, we, we don't want to embarrass them. We don't want to cause a scene. When we're sharing our faith with someone, we don't want to cause a scene because we're trying to win them to Christ. And by the way, I think that's, this is true, too, when we're having just casual conversations with people. Our, our responsibility is never to win our argument. Our responsibility is to win them to Christ. And our argument, whatever it might be about, when we're so adamant about it that we actually push people away from the most important truth, and that's the truth of Jesus Christ. So these are just some thoughts here to think about. And then most important, well, not most important, but very importantly is the next one. We need to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 17 on your handout. Let's look at this here. Look what it says. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from them, among them, and howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius, the the Areopagite, and I have no idea if that's how you say that, and a woman named Damaris and others with them. So there, listen, there's always, when you're sharing your faith, there's always going to be people who mock, who laugh. Um, and that's going to happen. Um, when you're talking about your faith, you should always be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's leading. Uh, there's been times where I've realized in a conversation that this person is just not interested whatsoever. So I was trying to leave on a good, good note and a good term. Or they just don't understand it. You know, many, many years ago, we, uh, there was, uh, I mentioned this to you last week, the, and, and then maybe these, these things still exist today. There are a lot of these soul winning classics or, or four steps. And I remember being at a conference and I remember this woman got up at this conference, and on the way to church, she got pulled over by a policeman, and in a matter of about five to ten minutes, she said she led this policeman to Christ out on the corner. Well, I remember that as a young Christian. I remember, you know, before I was in the ministry, I was in sales. I owned my own business. I was a fairly good salesman. I could pretty much spiritually talk to people and show them a Romans road and basically at the end where it says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and you, you want to go to heaven you don't want to go to hell right oh well, no you, nobody wants to go to hell well if you pray and you that's just a plan people need to know who the person of Jesus Christ is now don't get me wrong the Romans road in the Bible if you don't know what that is it's a four verses in the book of Romans Romans 3.23, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. I still use it. People need to understand that. Romans 5.8, but God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's really the plan of salvation pointing to the person of Christ, there has to be a work of the Holy Spirit in the person's life. The Holy Spirit has to bring that conviction and that knowledge and that understanding. So you and I, as we're sharing our faith personally, as we're sharing our faith um, in such a way that we've found a spiritual opportunity to, to do that, um, we're sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. I can tell you I've met people years past that we, Shelly and I were in their house and we quote unquote led them to the Lord. They just said, we just prayed to get rid of you. Let's just be honest. They didn't understand. So, you know, that was many, many years ago. Since those, those days I've learned to be very patient. This is a work of God. I can't, Paul said, I come not to you with excellency of speech, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is a work of the Spirit of God. But we're the tool we're the instrument. We can share our faith with people. God's working in people's lives. And it may be, by the way, that you've shared your faith with someone and they're to the place 
where they, they want to accept Christ as their Savior. And you help them. Sometimes people don't know what to do. What must I do to be saved? You know? So I, there's been times I've sat with people and say, well, I, I keep it simple. A, B, C, you have to admit that you're a sinner, but that's A. B, believe that Jesus died and paid for your sin, and C, call upon him by faith. Now, I say that those three things quickly and simply, but I take time to explain what those things all mean. And, and maybe that person has been witnessed to before, or they've been in church, or they, they would like to receive Christ. They know, and then you can help them, you can pray with them. But this is just sharing our faith or building others up in the faith. The, the second to the last one, sharing a scripture verse or gospel track. I was at the dump the other day, and uh, I don't know why, but I quoted that verse, the rain falleth on the just and on the unjust. And I always, I talked to the guy at the dump about spiritual things. I've invited him to church many times, and now in Reedsboro, for some reason, the dump is now open on Wednesdays and on Sundays. So that kind of makes it hard for him to come to church. I don't know why they, they pick those days. Um, but his wife has a connection to another church in town that preaches the gospel. I don't think they go any longer. And they have a family of about nine kids. But at the dump, I quoted that first. There's some other guy on the other side of the compactor. Amen, he said. <laughs> Frank and I were snowmobiling a couple of years ago. The guy who drives the packer on the snowmobile just stopped and talked with us. We gave him a got. We, I, I think if I remember, we had a gospel track with us on the snowmobile. We gave him, Ark was Ark was his name. We gave him a gospel track. The, and I'll be honest, the, I saw him afterwards. He stopped at my house. We sat on the porch and talked a while. The closest I got him to church, he actually came to church. But there were so many cars here, he left. He didn't get in the building. And I've lost track of him. But we gave him a track. Never know what a gospel track will do. So we share, we, because look, Hebrews says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, discern of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, the power of the word of God in conjunction with the Holy Spirit of God. And then lastly, because we're out of time here, Whenever you talk to someone, I always try to thank them for their time. I always try to tell them, thanks for letting me share this with you and, and, and talk to you about this. And um, just to leave them on a high note, on a good note. And uh, because if I've left a track with them, I want them to read that track. So many times I say, listen, let me leave this with you. This will just tell you what Jesus Christ has done for you. Get a moment, take a moment and read through this. And... Um, so those are just some very simple and practical things about sharing our faith, whether you're sharing the gospel with someone or whether you're inviting them to church or whether they're already a Christian and you're just trying to strengthen their faith. Um, the fishers of men, the Lord wants to use you as a fisher of men in any of those areas. In the room. You have a story to tell. You have a story to tell how you got saved. You have a story to tell how God's been working in your life. You have a story to tell about your past. You have a story to tell about your present. And just tell your story. And let the, let the Lord do the rest of it. You don't have to be a preacher to share your faith. You just have to be sensitive to the leading of God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, bless the morning worship service. Let it bring honor and glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so glad that you've taken the time to join us today. If you've been blessed by the message, or if you have placed your faith in Jesus today, we want to hear from you. Maybe you still have questions about what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Please let us know, and we would love to answer those questions from the Bible. We would also be happy to provide you with the Bible and other free Christian resources to help you grow in your faith. You can email us at info at mountgraylockbaptist.com or send us a message on Facebook. You could also call us at 413-662-2107. We would love to hear from you, and our desire is to be a blessing to you in any way that we can.
God bless.